Wonder Woman 792. I thought for sure we'd be getting a longer arc for this story. Guess we're moving on pretty quick. That's okay. So, currently at DC Comics, Batman just got a relaunch. You know, issue 17, no, 125. Superman's getting one kind of in like the January era. I'm, I'm here just thinking, are we going to do that for Wonder Woman? Why, why is hers the only book that's kind of keeping the legacy title up, you know? Batman is kind of doing his own thing now. Superman's kind of doing the thing, but a action, I guess, and Detective are still doing it. Feels weird to me that Wonder Woman hasn't got like a proper number one relaunch, but I, I guess that's okay. Uh, this book's interesting. There's actually a lot going on in here, more than I'd expect for this book. I dug it a lot, though. I, I don't hate this in the slightest. Very fun. So, last issue, we were kind of dealing with, like, the, like the, this flower that's found in, like, the milk stuff that Cisco was using. And Diana went to the facility. She found Cheetah there when we come back. She frees Cheetah, and they kind of get into a little scrap. Nothing over the top, but just like, okay, I'm here to help you. Please don't fight me. I will restrain you if need be. A doctor comes in and is like, oh my goodness, Wonder Woman, I have to call security. You know, as you do when you see Wonder Woman. If it Look, if you're in a situation where Wonder Woman shows up, you are instantly like, oh, obviously the side I should be on is helping her. That's just what I think. So we use the lasso to bind Cheetah up for a bit. We, we learn a little bit more about like the milk extra and like they're growing it here and how it's used, like the devil's heart flowers used in it. And there's like a company involved called Cat Kale Industries and who is run by them. We don't really know. Security wants to come in and fight them. So Diana's like, well, Barbara, if you want to fight somebody, why not fight these security guys trying to attack us? But she restrains Barbara before she kills any of them. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I like it. Interesting artwork. I can't tell if this is like, it is Marguerite Sauvage. Okay. I like this. It doesn't look as like crisp as some of like her other work. I don't know. Maybe it's the coloring that just feels like, I feel like the more like blue palette that was used in like the Superwoman book works a little bit better for what we're doing here. But the red kind of has its own thing going for it. Again, this is one of my favorite artists. So I like the way it looks. I just, the red palette's really different than what I'm used to so I don't think it's like hitting perfectly every single time we do cut to Olympus and we learn that guess what Hera is funding Phobos and Deimos to be like the people behind the scenes and Hera might be selling the milk hmm what's Hera doing being the bad guy well she's lying in a bathtub of the devil's flower cool can't wait to see where that goes and then Wonder Woman sets a charge and we're going to break out of the facility. We get a beautiful splash page where she has Minerva in her arms and all the other animals that are locked up are fleeing the scene with her. And it looks very fun and cool. And the Escacida are, of course, waiting outside for them, instantly ready to attack the men who are destroying the place. And it's a great, like, this is what you want from Wonder Woman. Like, I know people are like the big mythology stuff, but I'm more like... No, Wonder Woman breaks into a facility where, like, an evil dude was manipulating milk to, like, be suggestive and control incels. That's what I want to see, because that feels like something that would happen in, like, the Linda Carter era. And it's very fun to see that. Coming in great. So, probably not any survivors in there. There's, like, blood rising from the water, and you're like, that's kind of dark and creepy. But we start walking away again, and we have... Mina and Diana kind of talking while Minerva's hanging over her shoulders. They have like a nice little moment where they're just like talking about like the dream that Anahi was talking about and how everything comes together. A beautiful moment. Again, this is another element that I'm glad they're kind of reintroducing to the Wonder Woman mythos. It's just like this camaraderie between the Amazons and womanhood. The, the Trial of the Amazons, I've said, wasn't my favorite event that come out recently, but I can't say I hated it as much more. The more I look back on it, I do think there was something there that was compelling and fun to talk about, so I, I do enjoy seeing that. But Minerva starts to wake up. She's still in like a state of mind that's very dark and disturbed. And you see, like, I like her spirit. Mina's all in on her. She thinks she's really cool, but it takes some trying and some trial and error where Minerva bites into Diana for her to suddenly come to senses that she wants to heal and be a better person. I really like that. Because I, I know there's, like, characters in both, like, the huge pantheons of villains where, you're like, they don't need to flip-flop around. I'm fine with Minerva kind of being, like, the villain and the hero at times because it kind of works for her character. Interesting enough. I, I do like it. 
So it's it's a very cathartic moment, I think, for both these characters who have kind of been through the ringer of late, kind of post Wonder Woman 1984, we're told to be something that messed up. And now they're like, hey, finally, people will forget we were in that movie and we can be characters again. That's kind of cool. We cut to a week later where Edda is talking to uh, Dal. I don't remember if this is a character I can recall from the earlier books, but hey, maybe somebody leaked a story to the press and now the flirting's back on and you're just having a good time with it. And I'm having a good time with it. And I just like seeing people happy. And then we cut back to Checkmate HQ where Steve and Ziggy are just demanding we learn more about the flower and everyone's just like having a good time. I can't believe Ziggy's still around. Like, it just amazes me and makes me so happy to see, see that he is still here doing some fun stuff. But guess what? We have a new person joining our team, and Team Wonder Woman's forming to be very fun because Minerva is back, and she is a little more human-looking. She's got hair, and she's wearing clothes, so she's got, like, a sports bra and some really nice leggings on with some weird boots and floral design. And everyone's like, this chick is freaky. But Ziggy's like, oh my god, I'm going to go lie with the cat. Ziggy is so in on this woman that I'm like, that is awesome. I love it. Oh my goodness, that is so fun. So cool, Cheetah's kind of joining like the Wonder Woman team for a bit. I can dig it. I can Ziggy it, baby. I love it. Look at how like horny this team is. Everybody is out for something in this team. I love it. This is what I want, like a one, like a Wonder Woman show, like Peacemaker with this team. That would be sick. Entirely new cast. Entirely new cast. Please and thank you. Meanwhile, the reason that Diana cannot join this team at that moment is because she's headed to space. And she's like, ah, there you are. I found you. Clark, you're returning home. And I'm like, wow, you're right. I guess they, they met a couple issues earlier before Clark left. And now Clark's back. And I'm like, that was like 20 issues ago, maybe. Wow, we've been doing this for a long time. Wow, that's cool. So the book ends with like Diana and Clark reuniting. You know, I think that's kind of sweet. And it's like next issue is like the battle for the watchtower. Okay, I, I guess that's something. Very fun. Look, it's not my favorite issue of the run so far, but I think the colors are interesting. They do get a little bit better again once we use the blues, which is kind of really what I want to see, but the depictions of all the characters are fun. I love the energy involved in this story. This is a fun issue with a lot of cool characters doing some cool stuff. I can't complain. It did everything I wanted it to, and we got a sexy cat lady making our man from the past a little bit uh, insecure in his desire to be with cat ladies. So that's always fun, is when you can do that in a book, who am I to complain? That's all we want in comics, isn't it? Just beautiful cat ladies. And we're, we're getting it. So, epic. Epic win, if you ask me. So, Wonder Woman 792, I am going to give a 7 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.